Hi there, it's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and it's the June garden tour and there'll be about a minute of just showing you of all the changes and the highlights in the garden. One of the things we have really enjoyed is seeing the baby birds grow up. And what's quite funny is that the parents bring the babies to the bird feeder and they teach the babies how to use it. And so the baby bird will just sit, or the three baby birds will sit on the bird feeder, just shrieking their heads off. And the, the parents will feed them. And then slowly the parents feed them less and less. And you can see the baby bird thinking, well, I'm going to have to do this for myself. And here we've got a family of starlings doing it. Garden has started off full of softer colours, pinks and lilacs and, and just very soft and spring-like and the peonies have come out and there's a particularly lovely rose called Souvenir du Docteur Chemin and that's gone very well with a pink verbascum called Verbascum Copper Rose and those are things I've planted but most of the garden is self-seeded at this time of year and it's quite extraordinary how much the garden actually kind of plants itself. It's as if I have nothing to do with it, really. Amongst the self-seeders, there's one called Rosa Glauca, which is a, a very simple, almost wild rose with blue-green leaves. And it's very pretty, and it lives on the left-hand side of my garden in the shady bed. But it's probably decided that actually it would be so much nicer to be on the sunny side of the street. So it's popped up, and um, I've seen it there. It's about two years old now and I decided to leave it there because I think it's rather lovely. I wouldn't have planted a spray of rose of that height that close to the edge of the border myself, but as it's planted itself there, I think it's fine. The allium, these big starburst allium are called allium Christophii, and I had one of these in the garden when we first came here 16 years ago, but they self-seed everywhere. And we've now, this great drift, this river of alliums is just where they've decided to go. These little pink flowers with the soft felty grey leaves are called Lychnis coronaria and they're completely self-seeded. I did in fact grow a few from seed about three or four years ago and since then they've just popped up wherever they want to and they arrange themselves in a really neat ring around this tree which I thought was rather extraordinary. In the veg beds the parsley and the coriander are both self-seeded and Parsley just grows where it wants to grow and I have parsley pretty much all year round when I need it. The coriander tends to appear and then quite quickly go to flower and bolt, so I don't really get much coriander from it, but it does look very pretty. The poppies are self-seeded and I keep trying to pull out the red poppies and then plant seeds of pink poppies, but as you can see I'm not really winning. But I do love the poppies because the bees are just mad about them. The other advantage that the red poppies have is that they are signalling the change from the pinks and lilacs which have been really the dominant colours for the last few weeks and then I think we go into a much brighter colour spectrum because the next thing that will come up I think probably from next month is dahlias but I'm also challenging myself in the garden and I've planted quite a few plants that I've never grown before. I've added three cannas and I've also added um, a rose, it's a hybrid tea rose, and it has a striped pink and yellow flower. And I think that actually the rose growing community probably regard it as a bit of a rogue. But I'm giving it a try. I'm also planting ricinus for the first time this year. And the impression I want to give in the later garden is perhaps of something that's more exotic and more colourful than usual. But I don't know if it'll work, so I'm looking forward to finding out.
The other thing that's amazing at this time of year is that the cotinus is in full leaf and all its flowers have come out and they're very delicate. And what's also happened after, over the last few weeks has been that one of the clematis, which is called a clematis recta, that's R-E-C-T-A, and it's a ground cover clematis, but it comes up in a, in, with black leaves in a, almost a ball and then it just spills over in a sort of fountain of white flowers. And it's an absolutely lovely thing in the garden at this time of year. I'm going to be honest about the weeds. Um, it, there are parts of the garden where there are very bad weeds and that does tend to happen if you have a lot of self-sown flowers, you will get weeds because it's quite difficult to tell the difference between a self-seeded plant when it's very little and a weed. And after going to the Chelsea Flower Show this year, I realised that weeds have a real role in our garden and they can be beautiful. And so I'm really hoping to encourage nettles because they're also very good for butterflies. But I don't think bindweed is ever going to come into fashion. And I have taken two whole big sacks of bindweed out and even so the garden is absolutely thick with it. In one corner of the garden we have an enormous climbing rose. It actually comes from my neighbour's garden and so I don't know what sort of a rose it is. It's obviously a rose, I think it might even be rambling rector. And it has just come right over our pergola, over the alleyway beside our house and it's going down the wall. Literally it's probably going about 30 feet along the wall. So I think we're going to have to cut it back but it does make the alleyway smell absolutely gorgeous at the moment. So I'm not looking forward to cutting it back. It's going to be a terrible job. The One of the main things in the garden this month has been the irises and they have been so beautiful. And the peonies have been beautiful too. But now both the peonies and the irises are over. And one of my irises really needs lifting and dividing. It's been there for about three or four years. It's become very congested. It's become quite big. And I, what I have had to do is dig it up and then slowly prise it apart and untangle. There's quite a lot of weed roots in there as well, so I've pulled those out. And then I've replanted about two thirds of it back where it was before, and I'll probably plant the rest of it somewhere else if I can find a spot. But irises do need this every three or four years, but it's incredibly easy to do because, as you can see, I'm not really doing anything very well. I'm just hoiking a plant out pulling it apart and then sticking it back in again. So it, it really isn't a very expert job and I've done it with my irises like this several times. Uh, the blue ones that you can see here were divided last year. The other thing uh, that has changed a lot in the last month has been the Cerinthi. Now you will have seen from the last garden tour that actually I've had something called Cerinthi which is a blue flower, a very unusual blue flower which bees absolutely adore. And that's self-seeded as well. And it self-seeds in this huge clump in the main border and um, it's been there for about two months it's been amazing really but it's just suddenly gone it's just suddenly gone flop and I have to clear away all the stuff there's a certain amount of weeds that have grown around it and it's also completely covered one of the roses I've got a rose called burgundy ice which is very beautiful and the Cerinthi has just grown up around it and it has rather stripped it of its leaves so I'm going around the garden and pulling away things where the self-seeders have just got too vigorous and they're swamping the plants that I've planted or where the weeds have started to dominate or where something is going over. So what I'm really doing at the moment in the garden is clearing spaces and waiting for the next stage of the garden to come forward. One of the things that I have found so difficult about June is that Plants just flop over, they get bigger than I thought or I forgot to support them and I need to support them. So I've got two last minute ways of supporting plants and they're both metal and one is a sort of bent hoop, you can see there that it's bent and the other is like a shepherd's crook and that this shepherd's crook thing does absolutely brilliantly for single stems and the hoop can be wedged in to hold back a whole plant that's just tumbling over. So I find that from now onwards, I use supports, plant these metal plant supports quite a lot. The lawn's looking a bit shaggy and it's covered with clover and daisies and we just haven't had time to mow it. But actually, this is giving pollinating insects a real chance to feed. And I do think that lawns in June with clover and daisies do look rather pretty. So I kind of not rushing to go and mow it. 
And if you've enjoyed this, please press like, because then I'll know you'd like more garden tours. And if you haven't subscribed to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel, we upload on Saturdays with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden.